Hello friends, welcome to the course Essentials of Data Science with R Software 2, where we are trying to learn the topics of sampling theory and linear regression analysis. In this module on uh, linear regression analysis, we are going to continue with our chapter on the multiple linear regression analysis. So, you can recall that in the earlier lecture, we had talked about the estimation of the parameters and we had uh, seen that how those concepts can be implemented in the R software. So, now we are at a stage where we have estimated the parameters, the regression coefficients as well as the variance. Now, the next step is the test of hypothesis and confidence interval. So, now in multiple linear regression model, test of hypothesis plays a very important role in making different types of very important conclusion about the model. For example, in case if uh, you have taken some number of variables or you have selected some variables in your model, you would always like to know whether those variables are important or not or the data which you have collected on those variables, is it really helping you in explaining the variation in the value of response variable. So, basically you would like to retain only the important variables which are contributing in the model in some way. How to get it done? That is the question now and this is what we are going to do with the test of hypothesis. So, I will be considering two types of test of hypothesis. One is the test of hypothesis on a single regression coefficient and I will be talking of the test of hypothesis when we have more than one regression coefficients. Now, the next question is why not I am saying that I am going to consider here the test of hypothesis for the sigma square? Well, that we already have covered and whatever we have done in the case of simple linear regression modeling about the test of hypothesis and confidence interval for sigma square, the same story continues here. The procedure is the same, concept is the same, command is the same, package is the same. So, that is why now, I am going to consider about the test of hypothesis and confidence interval estimation only for the regression coefficients. Well, so well, let us begin our lecture. So, there are several important questions which can be answered through the test of hypothesis and they are considering the regression coefficients. For example, if we want to know what is the overall adequacy of the model or we want to know which specific explanatory variable seems to be important and similarly there are different types of questions which can be answered. So, in order to answer such question, we would like to develop the test of hypothesis for the regression parameters. Right. So, first we are going to consider the test of hypothesis on individual regression coefficients. Actually, we are going to consider two types of test of hypothesis, one for the individual regression coefficients and another will be analysis of variance, where we try to test the equality of all the regression coefficients. Right. So, in this case, we try to consider the null hypothesis H naught beta j is equal to 0 versus the alternative H 1 beta j is not equal to 0. And you can remember that you had the model y equal to x beta plus epsilon, which had the parameter beta 1, beta 2 up to here beta k. So, we are trying to test any of this beta 1, beta 2, beta k here. And what is the interpretation of the acceptance of hypothesis? If H naught is accepted, then it implies that the explanatory variable x j, which is corresponding to beta j can be removed from the model. What does this mean? For example, suppose I have a multiple linear regression uh, model with three variables x 1, x 2 and x 3, which I can write like this y equal to x 1 beta 1 plus x 2 beta 2 plus x 3 beta 3 plus epsilon. And now, suppose I try to test here say three hypothesis h naught beta 1 is equal to 0, h naught beta 2 equal to 0 and h naught beta 3 equal to 0. And suppose, the first hypothesis H naught beta 1 equal to 0 is rejected 
H naught beta 2 equal to 0 is accepted and H naught beta 3 equal to 0 is rejected. Now, what will happen? Once I say that H naught beta 2 equal to 0 is accepted, that means beta 2 is almost 0 in the population. That means, beta 2 is not significant. Well, what does this mean? Now, if you try to put the same value in the model here in this model, now this can be written as y is equal to x 1 beta 1 plus x 2 into beta 2 equal to 0, which is coming from the test of hypothesis plus beta 3 x 3 plus epsilon. So, finally, this comes out to be x 1 beta 1 plus x 3 beta 3 plus epsilon. What does this mean? Now, you can see here that the variable x 2 is not appearing in the model. means you can imagine that since beta 2 is close to 0, that means the rate of change in the average value of y with respect to x 2 is very small and possibly ignorable. And that is why we can believe or we can interpret that x 2 is not an important variable. Hence, this variable can be removed from the model and the revised model will have only x 1 and x 3. So, this is how you can see that the test of hypothesis plays an important role in the multiple linear regression analysis. It helps us in identifying the important variable in the model or it helps us in the selection of important variables in the model. Okay, so, now let us try to construct the test of hypothesis. So, we are going to test here as we discuss H naught beta j is equal to 0 versus H 1 beta j is not equal to 0. Right. So, now, you can recall that we already had constructed this statistics in the case of simple linear regression model. And there, if you remember, we had taken for example, B 0 minus say this here B beta 0 divided by standard error of B 0. So, this was the test statistics for beta 0 and similarly for beta 1, it was B 1 minus beta 1 upon standard error of B 1, where B 0 and B 1 are the ordinary least square estimator of the intercept term and slope parameter in a simple linear regression model. And depending on whether uh, sigma square is known, sigma square is unknown, we had uh, used the z statistics or t statistics. So, here also we have the same thing. So, once we are trying to test the hypothesis H naught beta j is equal to 0, where beta j has been estimated by OLSC or MLSC as b j. Right. So, the statistic which can be used here is t statistics. Why? Because you have got only the sample of data and nobody is going to explain you or inform you what is the value of sigma square. So, you need to estimate the value of sigma square from the sample itself. Right. So, the t statistics can be framed as b j minus beta j which is equal to here 0. Right. So, this becomes b j and divided by standard error of b j. And this will follow here a t distribution with n minus k minus 1 degrees of freedom. Right. Why there is n minus k minus 1 degrees of freedom? Because you are trying to include an intercept term in the model. So, your total number of variables of variables are say k a explanatory variables plus intercept term. So, that is why the number here is k plus 1, right. And that is why we have written this thing as n minus k plus 1 like this. And then how to obtain the standard error of b j? So, you can remember that we had obtained the ordinary least square estimator b, which was a k cross n vector and we had obtained the covariance matrix of b, right, where we had discussed that the diagonal elements are going to indicate the variances and off diagonal elements are going to indicate the covariances. So, now if you try to take here b, b is a vector like b 1, b 2, b k and somewhere it will be here b j. So, whatever is the diagonal element of this covariance matrix of B, that is going to inform us the variance of 
bj and if you try to take the positive square root you will get the standard error of bj and you can remember that this covariance matrix of b was sigma square x transpose x whole inverse right so if i try to write down this matrix here as say suppose if i try to write down here c matrix so c is equal to x transpose x whole inverse so now this c matrix can be written as c11 c12 up to here like this and somewhere on the j diagonal the element will be cjj so i can write down very simply that the standard error of bj is going to be square root of sigma square hat into cjj where cjj is the j diagonal elements of the matrix x transpose x whole inverse right so this is now my test statistics for testing the significance of h not beta j is equal to 0 now how to find the decision rule so now we have two approaches that the first approach is when we are trying to use the software so in that case the software will give us the p value that we already have discussed what is p value and how to take a conclusion so now i will not repeat it again but i will say the simple decision rule is reject h not against h1 at alpha level of significance if p value is smaller than alpha or if you come through the classical statistics and you try to divide the region into two parts acceptance regions and uh, rejection region and you try to take the type one error is alpha so that the region of uh, rejection is on both sides of the t distribution both sides are having alpha by 2 area so in this case i can say the h not is rejected if the calculated value of the statistic lies in the region of rejection either here in the shaded area right so if uh, the critical value which is obtained from the probabilities of t table it is here given like this t alpha by 2 at n minus k minus 1 degrees of freedom then i can say that reject h not at alpha level of significance whenever absolute value of t is greater than t alpha by 2 n minus k minus 1 so essentially i am trying to say that er reject h not right okay so if you try to see this test so you can observe that this is only a partial or marginal test why because bj is not independent means the jth regression coefficient that you have used here and you have used its standard error this is not an independent value of parameters right but it depends on all other parameters and all other variables also right so i can consider or we can consider this test as a contribution of xj given the other explanatory variables in the model so we have here information on x1 x2 xk and then we have parameters say beta 1 beta 2 beta k but we are trying to take out only one parameter beta j and out of this complete information we are trying to consider only one regression coefficient bj and then we are trying to construct the test of hypothesis for that okay so now i try to do one thing i try to take one simple example and would try to show you that how you can conduct this test of hypothesis in the r software so i am going to take here again the same example that we have considered in the last couple of lectures that we have data of students there are 20 students and we have collected the data on their marks obtained in an examination out of 250 then the number of hours per week of study which is denoted as x1 and number of assignments which they have submitted per month that is x2 and the number of hours the student has played per week that is denoted by x3 so if you try to take a student number 1 this means student number 1 has got 100 180 marks out of 250 and the student has uh, studied 34 hours in a week the student has submitted 3 assignments per month and the student has played for 15 hours in a week and similarly the similar data is for the 20 students here right okay so now for conducting the test of hypothesis what we are going to do we are going to use the command summary in the lm lm if you uh, remember we had used lm to fit the linear regression model and whatever is the outcome of the lm we we will try to use the summary command on that outcome which is obtained as an object right and for lm we already have discussed that the command is lm and inside the parenthesis you have to give the formula you have to specify the model and then you have to specify the data there are other commands also but we are not going to talk about them okay and then whatever is the outcome here that is actually called as as an object 
So, we try to use the summary command on this object and then there will be lots of outcome and we will try to see which part is indicating the test of hypothesis part. So, I am going to consider here the model y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 plus epsilon i and we have got here 20 observation. So, I have created 3 data vectors for x 1, x 2, x 3 and 1 data vector for y which I have stored here and you can also give it in the framework of a data frame. So, that depends on you what you want to do. Right. So, first I will try to show you this analysis on my computer and then I will try to bring you on the R console. So, now this is your familiar slide. We have used it couple of times earlier also that we have fitted here a model using the command lm and then whatever outcome is obtained from here, I try to use the command summary over it and then this was here the total outcome and you can recall that earlier we had talked about this part is going to give you the value of b 0, b 1, b 2, b 3. So, this is b 0, this is b 1, this is b 2 and this is b 3 and this column this is trying to give you the standard error, standard error of b 0 and standard error of b 1 and standard error of b 2 and standard error of b 3. Now, we are going to consider about this aspect. Right, but before that you can also now look here this aspect. I have not discussed about it up to now, but in the last time we had obtained the residuals in the last lecture. So, you can see here whatever residuals you have obtained here from say E 1, E 2, E 20, this output is simply trying to give you a sort of distribution in the sense that it is trying to give you what is the minimum value of the residual, what is the maximum value of the residuals and what is the first quartile, second quartile which is median and third quartile of the residuals. So, whatever residuals you have obtained. So, this is the simple data about it and yeah this will simply give you some idea that how is the distribution because you are trying to assume that uh, epsilons are following a normal distribution and there are various types of assumptions that we try to test. Since we cannot observe epsilon, so we try to take the help of residuals to visualize them and based on that we try to take different types of decisions. And this type of information what is given here, this helps us in taking those types of decisions. Right. So, now we are going to talk about this thing. So, what I try to show you here, this is the screenshot. So, essentially now I can say once again we are going to consider on this part. Okay. So, now, so I have just copied here the part which I am going to consider just for the sake of clarity, so that you do not get confused. Right. So, you can see here this is the part now, which we are going to consider. Right. So, now just for your recollection, we are considering here the H naught beta j is equal to 0 versus H 1 beta j is not equal to 0 and now j is going from 0 1 2 3 j equal to 0 stands for interceptum and j equal to 1 2 3 stands for regression parameters beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 and we are going to test them by t statistics. So, this is the t statistics which will be computed for j equal to 0 1 2 3. So, there should be 4 values of t statistics right which are going to be obtained. So, if you try to see here in this outcome, so if you try to look here t values you can see here there is 1, 2, 3, 4. The first one is for interceptum, then second is for beta 1, third is for beta 2 and fourth is for beta 3. So, let us try to consider one by one. So, first I try to consider the test of hypothesis H naught beta 0 is equal to 0 against H 1 beta 0 is not equal to 0. So, this hypothesis can be tested using the test statistics B 0 upon standard error of B 0. Now, if you see what is here B 0? This is here B 0. You can see my pen. And what is your here standard error of B 0? If you remember, this is the standard error of B 0. Right. 
but you do not need to compute it yourself. What I am trying to show you here that you must know that how a value has been obtained. So, if you try to see here this value here t, this has been obtained here like this. Right. So, and this is going to be n is equal to here 20, k is equal to here 4. So, the total degrees of freedom are going to be 20 minus 4 minus 1, which is 15. So, this t statistics has got a t distribution with 15 degrees of freedom under h naught. And you can see here, now I will use a different color pen, say blue, if you try to see here this thing. So, this is here the p value. Right. So, p value is written here. So, you can see now here that this p value is something like 0 0.00000247. So, this is much, much smaller than the value of alpha. So, we can take a conclusion that the h naught h beta 0 equal to 0 is rejected at alpha level of significance. And hence, I can conclude that yes, intercept term beta 0 is important and it is contributing in my model. Okay, now, the same process I can repeat for beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. So, now I try to consider here in the second line which is related to beta 1. So, this is the estimate of beta 1 which is the value of b 1. This is the value of standard error of b 1 and this is the value of here t statistics corresponding to b 1 and this is here the p value corresponding to the null hypothesis. So, in order to test h 0 beta 1 equal to 0 versus h 1 beta 1 is not equal to 0, we use the same statistics t is equal to b 1 upon a standard error of b 1, which is obtained here like this. And this also has got a t distribution with 15 degrees of freedom and the corresponding value of p here is 2 into trans power of minus 16, which is much, much smaller than the values of alpha equal to 0 0.05. So, we are essentially considering here the 5 percent level of level of significance. Right. So, alpha here is 5 percent. So, I can say here that reject h naught beta 1 equal to 0 at 5 percent level of significance. This means that x 1 is also an important variable and x 1 is contributing in explaining the variation in y. So, this x 1 will remain in the model that is an important variable. And similarly, if we try to go for h naught beta 2 equal to 0 versus h 1 beta 2 is not equal to 0. And the results for this hypothesis are given in the row for x 2. So, this is the value of b 2, this is the standard error of b 2 and this is here the t value corresponding to b 2 and this is here the p value corresponding to b 2. So, you can see here that the t value comes out to be here 23.493, you can see here and you can also obtain manually and this will also follow a t distribution with 15 degrees of freedom under h naught and the corresponding p value here is given by this 7.9 into 10 power of minus 14, which is very small than the value of alpha equal to 0 0.05. So, this hypothesis h naught beta 2 equal to 0 is also rejected at 5 percent level of significance. Hence, I can say that x u is also an important variable and this variable has to remain in the model. Okay, that is going to give us in important information. Finally, I try to test the hypothesis exactly on the same line about beta 3. So, h naught is beta 3 equal to 0 versus h 1 is beta 3 not equal to 0 and the information related to h naught beta 3 equal to 0 can be obtained from the last column of this outcome related to x 3. So, x 3 means this is about the regression coefficient associated with x 3, which is beta 3 in our notation. So, again this is the value of b 3, this is the value of standard error of b 3, and this is the value of t statistics and this is the value of p value. So, you can see here that this t statistics has been obtained here by 84.405, which follows a t distribution with 15 degrees of freedom and the corresponding value of p is here 2 into 10 to the power of minus 16, which is smaller than the value of alpha is equal to 0 0.05. So, h naught beta 3 equal to 0 is also rejected at 5 percent level of significance. So, this x 3 is also an important variable, which is contributing in the model. So, now you can see here you have identified that which are the variable. Fortunately, in this case all the variables are important, but after that you will see that I will try to consider a topic on the variables selection and there you will see that in the example which I have considered that all the variables are not going to be selected. All the variables cannot be considered as 
important. There will always be some variable which are contributing more, some are contributing less. So, we have to take a logical decision based on the statistical rule that which of the variables are important and which are not. Right. Okay. So, after this test of hypothesis, let me come to the confidence interval estimation, but once again I will say that I already have explained you the concept of confidence interval estimation in the case of simple linear regression model. So, here I will not spend much time on the explanation of the concept and I also had explained that how can you construct the confidence interval. So, the same methodology I am going to follow here also. Right. So, now we are going to consider here the confidence interval for the individual regression coefficient, but just for your information the confidence interval can also be constructed for more than one regression coefficients here which are called the simultaneous confidence interval. For example, if you try to take here say here two parameters beta 1 and beta 2 then the confidence interval will be taking a look like an ellipsoid or ellipse and if it is goes into three direction say three parameter then it would be like an ellipsoid and obviously when it is in one the direction this is an interval. So, we consider now here the confidence interval for the individual regression coefficients. Okay, so, we assume here that epsilon i's are i i d that means they are identically and independently distributed following a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square in the model y equal to x beta plus epsilon. And if you want to write about epsilon that will be a multivariate normal distribution k dimensional multivariate normal distribution with mean vector 0 and covariance matrix sigma square i. So, that is the same thing whatever you like. So, based on this assumption I can write down that we already have found that y will follow a normal distribution with mean x beta and covariance matrix sigma square i. And hence, we also have found that b will also follow a normal distribution with mean expected value of b which is beta and the covariance matrix of b is sigma square x transpose x whole inverse. Right. And if you try to find out the marginal distribution of any regression coefficient from this one, because this is here a multivariate normal distribution of k dimension. So, if you try to find out the marginal distribution of any particular estimate say b j, so that is going to be a univariate normal distribution with mean beta j and say this variance sigma square c j j, where c j j is the j diagonal element of the matrix x transpose x whole inverse. So, now based on that uh, we know that how to construct the t statistics. So, that is going to be b j minus beta j upon standard error of b j. So, standard error of b j can be obtained by replacing this sigma square in the covariance matrix of b j by sigma square hat. So, I can write down the t statistics as b j minus beta j divided by square root of sigma square hat into c j j and this is in general going to follow a t distribution with n minus k degrees of freedom. Right. So, if you remember that here k is the number of explanatory variables in the model y equal to x beta plus epsilon, where we have assumed that y is a n cross 1 vector and x is a n cross k matrix and beta is a k cross 1 vector. Right. So, this is what you have to always keep in mind and this sigma square hat is going to be obtained from the expression uh, sum of square due to residual divided by n minus k and the alternative expression is given by like this. So, that we already have discussed. So, now you can see that whatever concept we have learnt up to now we are trying to comprehend them and we try to use them. So, now if you go back to your lectures in the case of simple linear regression modeling and try to recall how we had constructed the confidence interval, then the same approach I am going to use here also. So, the 101 minus alpha percent confidence interval for beta j can be obtained as follows. Right. Try to write down here the t statistics and t statistics is going to follow a t distribution and on the left hand side and right hand side of the t distribution with n minus k degrees of freedom, I try to denote this area which is shaded here as alpha by 2 on the left hand side and shaded area on the right hand side as alpha by 2 and corresponding to which here there will be two critical values. So, this value is going to be minus t alpha by 2 and the value on the right hand side will be t alpha by 2 n minus k and somewhere it will be the mean. Okay. So, now you assume that this statistics t lies between minus t alpha by 2 n minus k and 
plus T alpha by 2 and minus k and you simply try to solve this inequality and you can obtain that this is here the lower limit of the confidence interval and this is here the upper limit of the confidence interval. So, you can very easily solve it and hence the 101 minus alpha percent confidence interval for, for beta j can be obtained here like this. Okay, so, this is how you can obtain the confidence interval, which is very simple straightforward. Now, this B j is known to you T alpha by 2 n minus k can be obtained from the table that can be also be obtained as a percentile directly from the R software. These values they are available from the output of the software. So, uh, this uh, lower limit and upper limit can be computed manually also very easily, but definitely we are going to use here the software. So, now in the R software how would you use it that is the next objective. So, we try to use command conf int. If you try to see that is the same command that we had used earlier also. So, in this case what we try to do first we have to use the command lm and whatever is the outcome of this lm that is stored as an object and from that object I have to extract the confidence interval of this individual regression coefficient. So, the command to find out the confidence interval goes like this, try to write down the command conf int, then try to write down the object, then try to write down the parameter for which you want to have the confidence interval and if you do not give any name of the parameter, then all the confidence interval corresponding to all the parameters will be given in the output and then you have defined here the level. So, remember level is defined here as a 1 minus alpha. So, if you are trying to take 5 percent level of significance, then the level will be 0 0.95 that is 95 percent. So, this is how we are going to do it. So, this is the explanation of this command. So, this is about object, this is about parameter and this is about level. So, this is just for the information. So, that you can when you try to read this, then you can recall all the things. Okay, so, now let me try to use this command on the R console and first I try to show you here the outcome and then I will try to show you on the R console. Okay, so, now first I try to consider here the confidence interval you can see here I am trying to use here conf int and then inside the parenthesis this is my object this is the command to obtain the fitted linear regression model and then I am trying to say here level is equal to 0 0.95 that means, I want 95 percent confidence interval and I am not using here the parameter or the option P A R M because I want all the confidence interval related to all the parameters. So, you can see here this will be the outcome and you can see here this is here 2.5 percent and this is here 97.5 percent and then there are here 4 values and 4 values here. So, this 2.5 percent is indicating actually the lower limit of the confidence interval related to interceptum related to x 1 which is beta 1 for beta 2 and for beta 3. And similarly, this part here is the upper limit which is the 97.5 percentile of the given data. So, now the thing is this we try to first understand these 4 outcomes. So, first we try to consider this part which I have enclosed inside a rectangle black rectangle. So, this is about outcome you can see here I am highlighting it. Okay, so, we are going to concentrate on this part. So, first we consider the construction of the confidence interval 95 percent confidence interval beta 0. So, you can recall that we have constructed the confidence interval for beta 0 like this where the lower and upper limits are given by these two expressions. So, you can compute these values manually also, but in the software you can see this is here the value, this is here the lower value and this is here the upper value or I try to use here a different color pen say red color pen. So, this value here is for the lower limit and this is the value of the upper limit. Right and similarly, if you try to find out the 95 percent confidence interval for the beta 1, then the interval is given by here like this and this value has been obtained here. Try to use this movement of my pen in blue color and this is the lower limit of the confidence interval which is obtained by this expression and this second value which I to look at moment of my pen this is obtained here by this expression which is the upper limit of the confidence interval for 
beta 1. So, this is how you can see that these are the values and this is how they are computed in the software. And similarly, if you try to concentrate on the confidence interval for beta 2 and beta 3, try to concentrate on this part which is here inside the black say box. Right. So, if you try to see here the 95 percent confidence interval for beta 2, this is here like this. Try to look into the column or the row of the x 2. So, this is here the value of the lower limit which is obtained by using this expression. This is the formula for the lower limit and this the second value here is the value of the upper limit corresponding to beta 2 and this is the value of the second that is the upper limit of the confidence interval. And similarly for this beta 3, this value here x 3 is trying to give you beta 3. So, this is essentially the lower limit of the confidence interval and this is here the upper limit of the confidence interval and these limits have been obtained. The lower limit has been obtained by using this expression and the upper limit has been obtained by using this expression which is the upper limit of the confidence interval. And you can see here that these are the 95 percent confidence interval in which the beta 3 is expected to lie. Right. So, now this is the screenshot of the same thing what you have seen up to now and I will try to now show you all these things on the R console also. So, first let us try to consider the test of hypothesis. So, you can see here we have this data. So, I already have entered this data in the R console I will show you and then we have to use this command here. on the R console. So, you can see here that I already have entered this data. You can see here this is x 1, this is x 2, this is here x 3 and this is, here, this is here y. Now, if you remember once you try to fit here a model and then try to find out its summary command, it will look like this. right? So, you can now see at this part, this part here. Right. So, this part whatever I have given here, this is the this thing which I will try to show you here. Right. So, this is exactly the same thing. So, what you have to see here that you try to look at this value. Okay. I will just highlight it and you try to see the movement of my cursor. So, this value here is the t value for intercept term and this is here which I am highlighting now this is the p value corresponding to h naught beta 0 equal to 0. And similarly, if you try to observe this highlighted value, this is the t value corresponding to h naught beta 1 equal to 0 and this is here the p value which is the corresponding to h naught beta 1 equal to 0. Similarly, this value highlighted here is the value of t statistics corresponding to h naught beta 2 equal to 0 and this is the corresponding p value. And similarly, this last value which I am highlighting, this is the value of the t statistics corresponding to h naught beta 3 equal to 0 and this is the here the p value which is corresponding to this hypothesis h naught beta 3 equal to 0. And yeah means obviously, this significance code I, they are trying to give you here the value of alpha and then this these three stars are going to indicate at what level of alpha they are being considered and we had already uh, we discuss these things when we had done the simple linear regression model. So, I will skip that part, but you can see here that uh, finding out the conclusion about the, uh, the, the test of hypothesis is not difficult at all. Right. So, after this I will try to obtain here the confidence interval. So, you can see here that we already have obtained this summary command and we already have found the L m command. So, I will try to use here this command and you can see here once I try to use it, I will clear the screen so that you can see it very clearly. You can see here this is my confidence interval. So, this is the lower limit of the confidence interval for beta 0 and this is the upper limit of the, the confidence interval for beta 0. Try to just watch where I am trying to highlight on the screen and this is the lower limit of the confidence interval for beta 1 and this is the upper limit of the confidence interval for beta 1 
and similarly this is here the lower limit for the confidence interval for beta 2 and this is here the upper limit of the confidence interval for beta 2 and similarly this is here the confidence interval for beta 3 lower lower and upper limit right so you can see here it is not very difficult to find out the confidence interval in case of this multiple linear regression model in the r software yes okay now so the time has come to stop in this lecture and uh, i have given you the details about the test of hypothesis and confidence interval estimation for the individual coefficients right i am not considering here the simultaneous confidence interval but uh, that is not difficult once you have understood these things now you can actually try yourself and this is what i want that you should stand on your own feet sometime i get many emails or calls people try to ask me well i am making this mistake can you please help me but i always say try to help yourself because finally you have to stand on your own feet that is the best thing in life you should be complete and sufficient in yourself you should not depend on anybody else and if you try hard there is no reason that why you cannot solve the problem so that is my personal belief and i believe that you also have the same philosophy in your life so now i will request you try to take an example whatever example you have considered earlier and try to conduct the test of hypothesis and confidence interval estimation under those example and try to see what do you get try to learn how to interpret it and the more you practice the more you will be confident more you will learn so you practice and i will see you in the next lecture with and the topic on multiple linear regression model till then goodbye